Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So today I'm going to paint some cats and um, I've got my preliminary um, sketch drawing painting here and what I've done is I was moderately okay about that so I've traced it and first thing I'm going to do is copy that onto my piece of watercolour paper. Um, at least that's the first thing I'm going to do in a second. Uh, we'll come back to that in a, in a tick. Well, no, I won't. I'll talk about that first. Um, I know some people don't have light boxes, so today I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. And I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, the sketch for this will be available on uh, dianeanton.com. All the sketches there are free. And you can download them if you want. The sketch well, it won't be this one. It will be the one that I'll do from the actual painting when I've done the painting. Um, and so we'll do that in a tick. Meanwhile, I'm going to talk about colours first. I'm going to be using my Kiritaki set, but obviously any set of watercolours would do for this. But the reason I'm going to use this is because <clears throat> it's to a certain extent easier if you're going to be doing some greenery, which I am. Um, this set has got lots of ready mixed greens, which is not um, necessarily completely typical of a set of paints. We've got everything from greenish yellow, which is a green, olive green, lime green, sap green, light sap green, hooker's green, sap green deep, forest green, turquoise green, and viridian. And all of those, including malachite actually, um, are the sorts of greens that you find in greenery. So I've got my uh, succulent pot plants in front of me, so I can see that that is true, what I've just said. All those colours are there, including a few others like um, some mauves and things. Um, but if you want to quickly do a varied uh, green painting, this set is, you know, a real time saver and also um, easier on the nerves than having to constantly... Uh, oh, I like mixing my own greens, don't get me wrong. But um, I also think that this is a fantastic way of getting the thing done, especially if you're doing lots of Christmas cards or something. You might want lots of different shades of green for your Christmas trees and your wrapping papers and all that sort of stuff. Uh, anyway, so this is um, my tester of the analogous greens that are here. I'm just going through all of these are different side-by-side -side colours and uh, they're all analogous. In other words, they're all next to one another on the set. Um, then the cats are going to be these, another set of analogous colours we've got here. Um, we've got yellow ochre and for the stripes on this cat I'm going to use chrome cadmium orange. Uh, then on this one I've used cadmium orange for the background and I'm going to use burnt sienna for the stripes and this one I'm going to use burnt sienna for the background of the cat and um, a darker brown colour which I think is uh, da -da -da, it was marron, maroon, maroon. So that's the cats and then the pots I thought I would go with some soft pinks uh, you could use any colour really, so it's up to you, and then we'll decorate them with some designs. So so that's that, and uh, hopefully that's going to work out. So I'll put that to one side. And the paper I'm using today, I'm going to use up this little sample set I got from Claire Fontaine, who make the Etival paper that I often use. They've got this one now, 100% cotton, uh, watercolour paper. They say it's £140, but I'll be darned if I think that feels like £140. Honestly, nothing seems right these days. This feels like about £110, but, you know, they say it's £140, so who am I to argue? Um, it's a hot press, so it's not got any tooth, and um, I thought it would work quite well for this painting. You never know. So I'll just pop that over there. Now, to transfer this onto here... I'm going to turn it over to the other side. I'll use this as a backing. No, I, won't. I need something plain. Right. Something plain in the way of paper. So 
that's the right way up. I'm going to turn it over. Um, and now I'm going to put some graphite on the back of this. I've got a few options here. I've got a, a very, very soft graphite stick here, which came from WH Smiths in England. I don't know if they still sell them there, but you can get them from Faber-Castell as well. Uh, this is pure graphite. This is an HB one, so it's a bit harder, but they come in different hardnesses. Um, uh, so, and this one is 9B, so that's very, very soft, so I'm going to use that, I think. Or I could use my very fat pencil, this one here, a Polytechnic. This is a, in a holder, and you can move it backwards and forwards, make it longer. Um, so, I don't know. It's a difficult choice. I don't know what to do. Anyway, I'm going to use this one. So, what you do, if you haven't got a um, light box, and sometimes I think this is actually easier than using a light box, um, although it can be a bit messy, but you just very gently coat the back. So you're basically making carbon paper, just like what we used to use when we were typists. So, <clears throat> and who hasn't learned to type? Uh, you can't use carbon paper to do this really. For, well, you could, you could, you could. Uh, who am I to say you can't? But there's no need, and if you haven't got any carbon paper, and of course, it has to be special carbon paper that doesn't spoil your painting. So I'm not going to recommend that because you could easily get the wrong stuff. So you just basically lightly, relatively lightly, sort of medium, medium lightly, go over all the lines from your sketch. And that sketch could be one you've done, or it could be one that you've downloaded from my website where you can get them for free. And you can give us a tip if you like. You know, a tip on the 330 from Newmarket, or you can give us a dollar or two for your sketches. Or if you join our membership, you get them you, without any guilt. You can download as many as you want for free. So that's Patreon or the YouTube membership. So there we are. That's don't need to put it there because there's nothing there to do. So we'll turn that over. <clears throat> I could use that paper. That's a, an etcher pad. I think I'll use this one. And so I'll pop that there and I'll just get some tape to hold it in place kind of thing, put it straight. <coughs> Here's my frog in my throat. <coughs> Frogs everywhere here. washi tape it's quite good it sticks just well enough but doesn't mess up your paper and then I'll take a sharp pencil this is just an ordinary school pencil um Stettler, I think yes Stettler and Norris school pencil we used to run a tuition center me and my daughter before covid covid put pay, paid to that when they did the lockdowns so we had to shut down but we did come away from that with quite a few bits and pieces of equipment. Oh my God, we had to throw away so much stuff because we had to clear out of our building in a hurry. And we ended up throwing away literally thousands of pounds worth, dollars worth of um, books and equipment. And oh my God, don't, don't let me think about that. Uh, sorry for saying, oh my God, but honestly, I need God's help to deal with that because it was a dreadful tragedy, tragedy, but the good thing is, out of that terrible tragedy with the loss of our business that we'd built up together for 20 years, um, out of that tragedy came this YouTube endeavour. And uh, so it was actually okay. And we're much happier doing this. We could have switched the tuition centre. We used to teach children who needed help um, we could have switched it online, but I had a, a gut feeling it wasn't going to work or that it would send my poor daughter demented. And I mean, she didn't need that. So so we decided <coughs> to uh, make some videos and see what happened. So I'm just with the pencil, just going around everything. And if I were to lift up the paper, to the tracing paper to show you, <clears throat> um, 
what's going on underneath. And to check, you can see uh, the design is being transferred onto the paper underneath. This is quite a, if you take the right attitude to it, it's quite a relaxing, calming kind of process. You don't need to rush it. On these, I, I'll probably just draw the lines in and I can put the leaves, the leaves in afterwards by, <clears throat> by hand. A little mouse here. Okay, now this pussycat. He's a real tomcat, this could be Arthur. We've got five cats. I know, when I say that, I can't hardly believe it. We've got five cats. What? <laughs> and this is um, Ginger Tom Arthur. That would be Mau Mau. I'm going to make her ginger. She's not actually ginger. She's Siamese, but... Um, and this could be... This could be um, Oriole, who is... A Spanish rescue rescue cat we brought back from Spain from when we went down there on holiday. We made the mistake of going on holiday without taking any of the cats with us. And after I'd been there about a week, I said to myself, I can't be here all winter without a cat. I need to find one. So there's always a rescue uh, cat available. So we got Oriole who's a beautiful black and white cat. I'm not going to draw him today, but I probably will at some point. He's lovely and he loves me and he kisses me passionately, just like any Spanish gentleman would have done years ago, given half chance. Um, yeah, my sister nearly married a Spaniard. It was a close call but his mother wouldn't let him marry her. She didn't like her. She said it wouldn't work. His name is Jesus. Jesus. It's a quite common name in Spain. They pronounce it Jesus. He was nice. My sister start, was a little bit younger than me, not much, a few years, still is actually, she's still alive. Um, but she waited to have her children. She was 10 years older than I was when she had her kids. So... Uh, why am I saying that? So no, oh, so she had lots more boyfriends than me. <laughs> there we are then. So that's our sketch. And what you can do if you want, if you want to keep at it, you can go over it again in pencil. And I will put in the leaves on this plant. quick way of doing it like that if you want and I might just sharpen up my little mousy person here but if you feel you can see everything okay you don't need to go over it again but you can if you want Depends what you're going to do. If you're going to do it um, in pen and ink, which you could. Then you might want to use ink at this point, but you don't need to go over the whole thing. I'm just showing you there that you could. OK, so let's start the painting process. And I'm going to use a brush. What one shall I use? Um, depends where I'm going to start. What am I going to start with? I think I'll use about a number, if I can find one, a number five or so. I've got one. Or number seven will do, won't it? This is a seven? Yeah, that's a seven. That'll do. Okay, so let us begin. Um, let's paint 
Shall we paint the cats first? Or shall we paint the leaves first? Tell you what, let's do the leaves. I'm going to do these leaves here from my little um, rubber plant. So I'm, I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to start, I've got all these greens to choose from. Let's start with this one. And uh, then we can put one here using a bit darker. Remember I said that um, I haven't used this paper before, so we'll see how this goes. And a really dark green here, perhaps. I'll just bring the stem down. And if you want to make the green really dark, you can add a bit of purple to it. Like that. And it's nice to have a good strong contrast. And when you're doing something like rubber plant leaves, you might want to just leave a little bit of light in the front there. So where it's reflecting. And if you're careful, you can just leave part of the vein white like that and a bit of shine there. Okay, so that's those. And then it will want to dry. Over the other side, I'm going to put in some yellowish tones first, some yellowy greens, because I've got this kind of, um, where's it gone? There it is. Is it mother-in-law's tongue? It's a very sharp plant. Pointed top. And and we'll just um, drop in a little bit of a very dark green. So the, this is the uh, what they call cobalt violet. And just put in some lines coming down like that to give, and then perhaps we'll just put a few dots there, and they will spread. Okay, and then we will do the little roundish kind of leaves also. And let's perhaps do these in kind of mid-green. Keep changing the colour. If you use a smaller brush, you can paint them much more accurately than I am, but I don't really want to spend forever on those. But I will grab a fine, maybe I'll pop the stalk in using a fine liner. A, well, not fine liner, it's a uh, uh, watercolour brush. This is one from Poetique Pine Tree Green. Gives you a nice thin line. You could do the whole painting in this, to be honest. And if you wanted to, you could sharpen up the leaves using that. You've already got the base colour in, so you just come in and sharpen them up a bit, tidy them up a bit. And on the lighter ones, you could put in a vein using this brush you could use use that all sorts of ways okay so that's that and uh i'll stick the lid back on now we're going to do one cat in 
and did I say this is a yellow ochre? So we'll just do him all over except his eyes. Of course, do, we do remember, don't we, that these are meant to be whimsical. They're not meant to be in any way accurate. And then his stripes are going to be orange. So we just pick up some of the cadmium orange and we'll pop a little bit of orange on his head and then come down the side of him with stripes like that. Make his paws a little bit more orange, perhaps. Maybe sometimes things don't go quite as you expect, and they didn't here, so I'm going to spread that color all over, and I'm going to come back and put some more stripes on there when when he's dry because it didn't quite work out. And that's probably a bad workman always blames his tools. It could be that the paper, because the paper is, like I said, a hot press. So I'm kind of asking a lot of it to um, behave itself. So where's my piece of paper with my colors and I've lost it. What did I do with it? There it is. Okay, so we will paint his pot in red, I think. Which will come out as a sort of pink, hopefully. And pink is complementary to green, pretty much, on that side anyway, so that'll give us an idea. Okay, so let's paint the ginger cat over here. When I say ginger, I mean cadmium orange. Doesn't matter if you go over his face, but it's probably best to not go over his eyes. So we've got his stripes in now. We'll leave him until he dries a little bit. And then um, I was thinking burnt sienna for this one down here. He's got those wonderful whiskersy things going on. And we can always make him a little bit darker. This paper seems pretty good, actually. It seems to I mean, why wouldn't it be? Claire Fontaine, one of the biggest paper manufacturers in the world, you can rely on people like that. Um, it seems to allow for a certain amount of corrections and that's, that's what people are wanting these days. They are wanting to be able to correct their watercolor 
paintings a little bit. So and then the one in the middle, let's do that in what colour was I thinking? Mm. Indian red, wasn't it? This one, I think. Yeah, so do this one. Oh no, that's too close to that. That's definitely too close to that. So we won't do that. We give him a bit more colour. purple don't try to I never try to make it go even the colour. I like to have a lot of variety in the strokes showing at the end when it's done. And then in the middle, because this cat is very much analogous to that, so I'm going to want to paint it a different colour, this pot. And in the first one I did, I did it in grey, so I'm going to go for grey, because that's kind of neutral and it allows these purpley ones to shine. And this is nice to have this ready mixed grey in this set. It's like Davy's grey in your Winsor & Newton set, but it's more got more body to it. So it uh, covers better. I always find it's hard to activate Davy's grey. It seems to be a little bit slow to um, wake up, so to speak. Okay, so now we need to use a bit of burnt sienna for the stripes on this one, I think. Put some stripes on his tail, a little bit of colour between there, and maybe, maybe there. He's going to look like a right monster. And then on this one, also, And I suppose the mouse wants to be brown, doesn't it? This colour perhaps, sort of dull brown. Okay, don't now we need to let that dry, I think. So it's more or less dry at the moment, and I think what the next step to do is to um, put in the eyes. And I've done this one already because I had to just try it out, make sure it was going to work. And so I'm just going to do the second one. So I'm just outlining the shape, which is a, a bit, what's the word, um, unrealistic, but it'll do. And then we'll colour in the nose 
and you have a choice as to how you do the face, the mouth and everything, up to you. I'm sure you'll make your cats look much prettier than mine. And then you just draw in their whiskers. I'm using a 0 0.5 pen. Uh, this is a Stettler fine liner. And just make the center of the eyes dark. You could put color in there if you wanted to, but um, you know, it's up to you really. Oh, we've got the mouse down here. We don't want to forget his whiskers and his little eye. There. And then this one, you could you could give them a sort of much rounder eye if you wanted to. They don't have to be um, pointed. They could be round. Some cats have much rounder eyes. We've got one cat, one of our Siamese, has got very rounded eyes. Little nose up there. Could give her much less long. They look more like cats and less like dogs if you keep that nose part quite short. I think perhaps I've gone a little bit too, perhaps I'll make her nose a little bit bigger. And then, I don't want to go too far, but, and then we give her some eyebrows. And he can have eyebrows too. He looks like a little devil down there, doesn't he? Okay, it's just fun, isn't it? Give him some little claws. And um, I did want to, um, let me just do the insides of the ears a little bit. I did want to sort of decorate the pots and um, I think I'll do that with a pen and I think I'm going to use a white pen. So I'm going to put, let me see, what shall I put? I'll put a nice line. This is just a case of whatever rings your bells, so to speak. So we'll just put a little banded design around there like that. And this one doesn't need anything. That's come out reasonably well. Um, this one, let me think. Um, you could make it a bit darker if you wanted to, then the design would show up better. Um, but I'm thinking maybe I'll just put a few flowers on it, make it look like a nice pretty teacup. But the great thing is you can just use whatever design floats your boat. So there we are. And um, maybe, maybe, I don't know, I think perhaps we might want to just improve the shape of these mother-in-law's tongues or whatever they are a little bit. Perhaps put some veins in these leaves too. If you felt that way inclined, you could do some here as well. And what else? Have I forgotten anything? No, I think that's probably good enough. I'll put a little light in the eye. It's very easy to make a cat look a little bit, you know, unfriendly, but they're not. They really aren't. Did you know that when a cat blinks at you, closes his eyes and opens them slowly, it means that he loves you? Or he, at least he likes you. <laughs> and I don't know whether to use a bit of oops, a bit of ink maybe on some of these edges. It's basically to cover up the lines from the tracing. Not really necessary, but you could do that if you wanted. So I think that's done. We probably want to erase some of the lines. If I can find my rubber, my eraser, oh, there we are, that one will do. Uh, 
Don't want to mess it up by making it smudge. It's not quite dry, so I won't do too much of that, but that's the last step that you'll want to do probably and put them on a nice tablecloth. Oh, see, that's what happens. So just tidy that up, take some water, a paper towel. And if this paper is good, it will allow you to lift off your clumsy error like that. If it's not good paper, you can say goodbye to your painting because it won't come off, but that has come off. So there we are. Three cats and two pots, three pots. Hope you enjoyed that, give it a try. And um, as Christmas is coming or pumpkin season and so on, you could substitute um, parcels, wrapping wrapped up parcels for Christmas instead of these pots and put a Christmas tree behind, for example. Or for pumpkin time, you could have the cats sitting inside of hollow, um, hollowed out pumpkins or something like that. So there's lots of possibilities for a design like this. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'll let you go now and I shall see you tomorrow. So bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.